Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at Tesla's solar installation. This isn't necessarily a full review because the thing's not turned on yet. We're still waiting for the final approval from the utility company. We'll get into that in just a little bit and in terms of how long it has taken us to start the process where we're at and how long I expect to kind of continue waiting. Let's start at the beginning. We recently purchased this house and one of the things that we wanted to do for the house was to add solar with the increasing cost of electric here in Southern California. The ongoing increase in gas prices as well was another big factor because we wanted to switch our vehicles to electric. So utilizing solar would be a huge, huge benefit because then we could self power those cars. So around June of 2021, I started the research and checking in to see what was the availability, what were the upfront costs, um, who else could do this besides Tesla? After kind of doing a couple of consultations with a few local vendors and companies around here, it became very obvious that the Tesla solution was kind of the best one for one main reason. And that reason being that Tesla owns and operates the entire process from start to finish. And what I mean by that is they're the ones that are hiring the contractors and installers to come and do it they're the ones that are also providing the physical um, panels in terms of the actual solar they're the ones putting in the install electrical outlets and boxes and gateways um, the whole process from start to finish they're also the ones contacting and connecting with various city officials on permits um, working if you have hoas and things of that nature they're working with all those individuals to kind of make it done so essentially if one person uh, kind of or one company owning this process start to finish so that was for me the main reason less hassle it also worked out to be significantly cheaper in terms of the system my system is a 11.56 kilowatt system with two power walls and when priced out it was roughly I actually don't know the number off the top of my head I'll add it here on screen in comparison to some other quotes that I got where just for the 11.56 kilowatt system just the solar panels it was uh, closer to the total price of what the Tesla solution was, but the Tesla solution also included power walls. Like I said, service process in June, finally agreed and, and started the whole process with Tesla in July, in terms of putting a down payment and scheduling. The process obviously is online, it's I think $100 deposit, and you're uploading things like your utility bill, pictures of kind of like where potentially they could do the power wall installs, your uh, electric panel, then your advisor is going through and then pulling the permits needed and then also kind of validating where they can put the panels, where they can put the power walls, all that stuff. Everything is in, in place in July, mid, mid to late July. The first site visit is in August. That's great. They do a site visit, take pictures, everything seems okay. And then nothing. All of September, we don't hear anything. Uh, reach out, you know, everything keeps getting pushed back. It's September, still nothing. Early October, we get text messages saying they need to do another site visit. So they send now a site project advisor who comes out and checks everything and then lets me know that there are going to be, there were two main problems where they originally decided to put the power walls uh, where right next to the electric panel, which is ideally where you would want them. Uh, we have, unfortunately, a, ga a uh, gas heater there um, and then also we have a pool so there was a lot of issues with the distance between the pool and the power walls based on the pool had to be x amount of feet away from the power walls and that location was deemed unsafe thankfully after a bunch of calls they were able to decide to move the power walls to the other side of the house early november uh, we get a message uh, saying that hey your install date is going to be I believe it was the second second week of December. Okay, you know, that's roughly four-ish months of kind of going back and we're planning, but we finally have an install date. All good. So install day comes, they come, they're, you know, very professional. Uh, I speak to the on-site uh, coordinator uh, who kind of walks me through the process, explains what areas are gonna be kind of closed off and kind of the time frame. This was quoted as a two-day job in order to get the panels and the power walls can, uh, physically installed, connected, 
and rerouted to the new electrical panel. So when they install the solar, they leave your existing panel, which just kind of connects to the power line and then acts as a, essentially a dummy terminal to the electric panel that they install, which is then connected to their gateway. Basically three installs were happening, new electric panel and gateway, power walls, and then the actual solar panels. So it was divided into three teams that came here around 8 a.m. They worked around the clock until around five o'clock when the sun started going down. For the most part, it was majority done. This was a crew of, I believe, nine people uh, working on all of these three different areas. Two big Tesla vans had to pull in to kind of uninstall all of this equipment. And on the second day, they came back, finished up some of the panels, finished up the power walls. What really impressed me was they actually made sure to kind of match the color of all the piping to the house color, patched up any holes or anything that they had left. We checked the roof with our drone afterwards. Everything looks and still looks really, really good. And then explained to me that the next steps would be Tesla would send an inspector to come and verify everything. The city would send um, an inspector to verify everything. And then after that, the uh, utility company would come verify, install, install a solar meter, and then the system was 100% turned on. So after install, which is middle of December, about a week later, Tesla sends their guy to inspect everything. Because we have the newer Powerwall 2 Pluses, it allows the system to turn itself on and be used because you don't want gigantic batteries just sitting there stored with energy and not charging and discharging. So what I was told on install date, or the second install date by the main site advisor, that the system would be working up to 70%. And the system would not be sending any energy back to the utility company because you get a fine for that. Cool. Middle of December, so that's what the guy tells me. All right, awesome. He leaves, a couple days go by. I'm looking at the app. It's barely registering that there's anything there. It's pulling in maybe 5%, right? It's pulling in like 5%, which equates to like, I think it was like 0.1 kilowatts per hour. Not ideal, right? So I'm getting kind of nervous, it's a new system. So I call test and I'm like, hey, I thought this thing was supposed to be like, 70%. And mind you, this is an 11.56 kilowatt system, meaning it should, in 100% perfect scenario, perfect sunlight, perfect everything, you'd get that. Granted, I've come to learn that, you know, 100% perfected days never happen, but I should still be seeing something higher than 0.1 kilowatts. Call Tesla, I asked about this. Tesla is confused by this. They said, I've, I've never heard of this 70% thing so they call somebody else still nobody's ever heard of this i was like well i was told because it's the power wall two plus system so they start looking into that they don't have an answer for me i said fine can somebody follow up hear nothing hear nothing hear nothing site person shows up to do an inspection um i asked the same questions they said oh yes that's that's very true let me double check um, it is supposed to be doing that 70%. Mind you, the batteries during this entire time, they are at 100%. They're just, they're fully packed, but they're not discharging. So the inspector checks everything. He's on the call with a bunch of people. And eventually I check the app when he's almost done. And yeah, now it is discharging the batteries and it's pulling in energy up to around two kilowatts or something. So he finishes his work. And he explains, yes, it is supposed to be at 70%. It's not a well-known thing because it's such a brand new product. So this is end of December, entering January. I'm like, okay, the city inspectors come, they check it, they green light it, everything is great. And that was January. And that was the last I've heard of anything. I'm recording this video right now in the middle of March, 2022. The system is still not 100%. The one thing that is weird is... Week over week, month over month, I am producing more energy, producing closer to 100% and definitely over 70%, um, which is not a bad thing at all. The thing that is weird and frustrating is I still can't get a definitive answer as to when the system will be 100% turned on. I was originally told that it is eight, it's six to eight weeks from installation that typically the entire last process can take. We're now entering week 12. And I recently 
tried contacting Tesla. The phone support, unfortunately, once I've, you've, I guess you reached this point, you have no real project advisor anymore. You can only really get a hold of someone via chat. I know that they're going through updated processes in terms of customer support, um, but it is still difficult to get a proper answer. And the only answer I've gotten, um, which was about two days ago, was that it is still pending the utility company, um, LADWP, which is interesting because I did call LADWP and started diving down the rabbit hole of what the process looks like if it was me doing it on my own. It is very complicated because you're talking to not only a utility company, I, you have to also talk to the building planners. Um, when I finally got a hold of someone at LADWP, they did say to me that they were waiting on paperwork from Tesla. So I don't know where the disconnect is happening between Tesla and LADWP. That's why, you know, title of the video is Tesla Solar Review, sort of. I'm not done yet. Still waiting to see what is going to happen with this whole process and what else I need to do uh, to kind of get it to the point of the system is 100% in place and running. I will say overall, the process has been fairly good. Fairly good in the sense that they came and they did the installation. There's been no damage to the house. There's been no extra hassles. Um, the only hassle is just trying to communicate with Tesla and understand how the thing is supposed to work. 70% versus the 100% been confusion around that. Um, that's kind of my main concern is that it has been a little bit difficult trying to get information. And thankfully, I'm one of the few where it's not been a situation where I've needed Tesla because they fucked up so badly. Uh, I have seen horror stories of people who's roofs were damaged and they have no recourse they're still waiting for tesla to kind of respond and tell them what to do so overall we'll see what happens i will definitely do a follow-up video once the whole thing is up and running that's everything i have to say again follow along like subscribe get notified when we do these reviews the pod is primarily on movie and tv reviews but we do throw in some random stuff uh like the tesla solar system I'm not going to give it a yes or a no in terms of if it's good because we're not done yet. We're still half halfway, mostly there. I don't know. We'll see how long it takes.